Okay, I would like to talk about instantaneous utility because this is a useful concept when you're thinking about how utility is experienced differently across time. So if you're an economist, you're familiar with something that looks like this, where you have utility in period zero, utility in period one, and of course you're discounting utility in period one by one over one plus r. And if you're a behavioral economist, you might throw a beta in there for the beta delta discounting model. That's totally optional for this video. Um, but utility in period two, utility in period three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So simply, instantaneous utility in period five is simply the utility that you experience while you are sitting in time period five experiencing it. And of course, when you're writing something out like this, you're writing it in present value. So all of this utility is being adjusted to put it into time period zero's perspective in which case we have this utility, the instantaneous utility experienced in period four, which we're discounting appropriately so that it matches the units of period zero. We're putting all of these in the same time units to handle them well. So instantaneous utility itself is a fairly straightforward concept. It's just from a specific time period, and that is the period in which that utility is actually experienced. However, I would like to introduce a couple of other terms that relate to instantaneous utility and help us think about the future. One of these is going to be anticipatory utility. Okay, anticipatory utility is utility that's experienced instantaneously in a particular time period, and we'll use time period two for this example, in anticipation of consumption that will take place in a future time period. And the classic example here is lotteries, where why do you buy a lottery ticket? Is it because the expected value of the lottery ticket is a good deal for you? Most people know that that is not the case. However, people still buy lottery tickets, and so the question is, why do they do that? And one reason is that the week you spend leading up to the lottery, fantasizing about winning the lottery, and talking to your friends about what kind of house you'll buy if you win the lottery, that utility that's experienced when you're looking forward to the, to the lottery, that is real utility. In which case, this is anticipatory utility. It's utility experienced in period two, thinking forward to something that you will or will not consume in period four. And this is capturing the fact that we actually have real value for the experience of anticipating something. And another way of thinking about this is vacations. Have you ever had a vacation where you spent a lot of time planning and talking with friends and just looking forward to the vacation, such that all of the value that brought you leading up to the vacation um, actually made the entire vacation way more worth it? That's anticipatory utility. Of course, there can also be anticipatory disutility. For example, I tell my students, you probably have some anticipatory disutility thinking forward to an exam. And you might ask people, do you have one week of anticipatory disutility where you get a lot of disutility thinking about that exam coming up? Or is it two weeks? Or is it two days? And it's different for each person, but most people will agree that the disutility they actually experience in the moment, thinking forward to something that will be consumed in a week, that's real value. It actually affects how we feel and we might take actions with that kind of utility in mind. Now, another concept that goes along with anticipatory utility is residual utility, which is basically the same thing except looking backwards instead of looking forwards. So of course, vacations can lead to a lot of residual utility. After you have the vacation, you spend a lot of time after the vacation thinking backwards on the experience, reliving some of the experience by telling stories about it. And so residual utility is a utility experienced after the vacation has ended about something that was consumed in the time period where you had the vacation. Again, same as anticipatory utility, except this time it's looking backwards instead of forwards. And students will oftentimes ask how residual utility is different than remembered utility. 
because remembered utility versus experienced utility is something that Daniel Kahneman talks about in his TED talk, which I'll link to here. And the way I explain this is that remembered utility is about the assessment of utility it's about how do you assign utility to the time period in period two. So for remembered utility, it's still about what is the utility for that vacation. You're just sort of thinking forward and assessing this value after the fact. Whereas experienced utility is how would you assess it right in the moment when you're having that vacation. However, both of those are about the utility that's instantaneous in period two whereas residual utility is experienced in a different period looking back on time period two. So that's the way I like to explain the difference between residual utility and remembered utility is that it's experienced instantaneously in period four. It's not an assessment of the utility in period two. So instantaneous utility is a super useful concept if you want to think about the fact that you really do get utility from anticipating things and from looking back on things. Our brains don't just exist in the moment and that has real value. And accounting for that when we're modeling things is going to improve the accuracy of our model. 